Tuesday, uh, July 27, August regular business meeting to order. And I'd like to ask Ms. Anaya to please read the Open Public Meetings Act statement. On Thursday, January 14, 2021, notice of this meeting was mailed to the press and the current of A. Carper Township. Notice was also delivered that day to the A. Carper Township clerk and posted on the bulletin board in Township Hall. Advertised instructions for this hybrid meeting were posted on our website and on social media on Friday, July 23, 2021. Thank you, may we have roll call. Ms. Alabarda? Here. Mrs. Bird? Present. Mr. Della Barca? Here. Mr. Ireland? Here. Mr. Price? Here. Mrs. Oh, Sullivan? Here. Can you hear me on this mic? You have to hit the mic, please. I, no, it's not. There it goes. Hello? Hello? Okay, we'll get that taken care of. Okay, we will get that taken care of. One second, keep taking roll call. Mr. Price is here. I'm here, thank, thank you, it went that time. Okay. No problem. Mrs. Sullivan? I'm here. Mrs. We will get that address. I'm going to continue with roll call. <laughs> Mrs. Sloggy? I'm here. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Mrs. Gil uh, Gilbert Floyd, please. Here. Mr. Castellano? Here. All right. Thank you. Can we all please, can we all please stand for the flag salute? I was just asked, and I'm sorry, I would like to ask everyone to please stand. We're going to have a moment of silence for a retired teacher, Mary Alton. Regarding the microphones, we had our systems upgraded. It sounds so much better, if, for those of you who can hear the difference already. Uh, we cannot have more than two, maybe three at the same time. Definitely two are fine, but if everybody hit at the same time, it's not gonna let you. So I think that might have been what happened. So. Okay, so first I'm gonna ask for a motion on the minutes. That's 4.1 through 4.5. So made. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Okay, Ms. Alabarda? Yes. Mrs. Bird? Yes. Mr. Delabarca? Yes. Mr. Ireland? Yes. Mr. Price? Mr. Price, yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Salagi? Yes. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. Mr. Castellano? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, so again, I'd like to welcome everyone to our uh, July business meeting. Um, the summer is busy, and especially this year, as we all know, uh, as we uh, are um, working through our summer programming and, of course, getting ready for the fall. Um, so I just want to take a quick minute before our superintendent's report starts. Um, there has always been a lot of uncertainty surrounding this pandemic uh, with information and guidelines changing constantly, and that continues right up until today. Uh, there's one thing, though, that we can all do as a school community to help uh, ensure that we have the best fall that we possibly can, and that is anyone who is 12 and over, please get vaccinated. Um, and in order to help you do that, we are going to be hosting a clinic uh, in uh, collaboration uh, with Atlantic Care. They will be here on August the 2nd at Egg Harbor Township High School from 9 to 2, I believe. The, uh, they will be offering the Pfizer vaccine free of charge, no appointment is necessary. Uh, so that's one thing we can control, so let's please do that. Um, before I turn it over, um, 
every now and then I like to embarrass people a little bit, pay a little compliment, and I'm going to just have to give a shout out to our very own Mrs. Hauk Elko and the Cooper Levinson Law Firm. Uh, they are involved and in fact started a non and that organization is called Let Us Eat Please. And what that organization does is they work to provide meals to students all around the area during the summertime when schools uh, are not in a, a position to be providing those uh, lunches and breakfasts that normally are the school year. So it's a very, very important mission and we want to just take a, a minute to shout, shout out to Mrs. Halk Alco and Cooper and let us eat please. Thank you so much and it is available to the families in Egg Harbor Township. They just go to the food bank and there's vouchers there for them. So thank you so much. Thank you, we appreciate that. Okay, and now with that, I will turn it over to Dr. Cruccio for our superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Castellano, and welcome everyone. One of the hottest days of our midsummer. Um, that's a great thing. Um, it was a beautiful day today, and lots of work going on in the school district, so I'm gonna share out what, what's going on um, based on um, our student learning goals. But again, to remind you as we approach the new school year, um, of our mission statement of embrace, engage, and educate. And um, we, you know, we work hard to embrace our students and our families and our teachers and staff. Uh, we learn about their needs and what they're all about. And then we're able to engage them in relevant learning experiences. And we work to educate them um, with rigor, relevance, and building relationships along the way. So our COVID update this week, um, at the end of July, we have four new cases in the district. It's eight for the total for the month of July, four students and four staff. Right now in Atlanta County, we are in a green status. Masks are optional in the classroom and mandated on buses. As Mr. Castellano said, we are spreading uh, the news that it's important to be vaccinated and there's a vaccinated vaccination clinic on August 2nd. And then again on the 24th, that'll be at the high school um, between 9 and 2 p.m. And Atlanta Care uh, has partnered with us um, for that um, great thing that they do for us. Pandemic response team meetings will commence on August 11th and 12th at the building level. And then we'll have a district town hall meeting. We'll call it the return to school meeting on August 16th, 6.30 at the high school. Um, the purpose of this is for our pandemic team meetings to reach out to staff and parents who are on those committees to talk about concerns, questions that they have, um, and then that information will be brought to the district level and we'll have that town hall meeting um, to discuss what, what people are, are thinking. There are questions out there. What are we doing in September? I stand right here and say, we're gonna open schools and be as normal as possible, return to school. But you open the paper, you listen to the news, and you hear masks will be required. You hear there may be virtual learning. I don't know. I haven't received any guidance from the state of New Jersey at this time. We have our superintendent's meeting um, in the next couple weeks. I'll know more countywide, but as of now, I have no guidance. All right, so we'll have these meetings maybe within the next two weeks. We'll have some more information. And then I also said to my staff when I put these dates up here, we'll have the meeting on the 16th and from the 16th to the 31st, there'll be guidance that may change because we've lived through that, right? But what we're gonna do is we're gonna be prepared and be able to offer plan A, plan B, plan C based on the recommendations that our stakeholders give us. Okay, under student achievement, the district learning goal, um, a reminder again, that encompasses literacy for all stream, social emotional learning. I wanna uh, give a great shout out, a big shout out to uh, Ms. Kristen Boyd, who is the director of our Aspire program. That grant has been renewed again. However, she's running a great summer camp that the county superintendent came to visit a couple weeks ago and was just in awe as to what, we're be what is being offered to our students and the participation rate. So Aspire, it's called Takes Flight, All Things Failing or Falling and Flying, and 
These are the areas that our students are be able to uh, experience. STREAM, as you know, has to do with STEM, um, science, technology, reading, engineering, and um, ma art and math. Um, there's enrichment opportunities throughout the day. Students experience one hour of math in the LA enrichment in forms of activities, games, and challenges. Uh, they participate in sports, recreation, art, aviation class, and drone class. And we are the recipient of the IDEA Supplemental Grant for the 21st Century Community Learning Center, where small group tutoring and skill building for special education students and their peers are offered for the, in this program. And our students are learning aerodynamics, coding, piloting drones, and every morning they kick the day off with a pep rally, which is a lot of fun. And um, we are partners with the Community Food Bank uh, for the food for the children. Also under Ms. Uh, Boyd's direction is our Talents Program, the Talent and Learning of Next Gen Students. It's a program that we offer parents for after school care. Uh, our students um, are participating in educational and academic experiences in math, reading, science, and enrichment. <coughs> they participate in recreation, arts, crafts, and science lab challenges, and they take field trips uh, to the different areas in, in South Jersey. Also under student achievement, our EHT Ready programming um, is in full swing. Some has, have ended, some are current, and some will continue in August. But we offered credit completion, ready for high school, EHT ready for elementary, extended school year, wrapped up and in person. It will go to virtual in, in August. Um, EHT ready supplemental, our aviation program, and our Calm Academy. So our school, some schools are open, staff members are in, students are learning, student needs are being met. That's what it's all about. Climate and culture, this is where we work to create a positive uh, climate and culture in schools. <clears throat> we recognize, reward our students. We strive on the importance of cultural proficiency and equity. Our Renaissance themes have been selected for next year. Phil Boyd will be in the district in September to work on administration talk about um, unified sports as a program that we'll be bringing um, to the district in the, in starting in the fall. We're very excited about that. That's our, an opportunity for our special education students to participate in after school activities and we're looking for that to happen K through 12. And our athletic practices are pretty much in full swing. And I put that under climate and culture because our coaches are so excited and so determined to get our students out in the field, build teamwork, and have them working towards a common goal. Community partnerships is all about building relationships with the community. Um, right now we are holding our in-person registration uh, for students pre-K to 12. That includes kindergarten registration, so if you know anyone um, who have students new to the, to the community, be sure that they register for our schools. <clears throat> the better knowledge we have of counts Class counts, enrollment is gonna help us better plan uh, for September. Kindergarten orientation is in our plans for the end of August. We are in need of bus drivers to get these students to school. So if you know anyone who's looking for a job, we have uh, opportunities for bus drivers and we train them as well. We have athletic camps. Our teams are offering athletic um, the camps for the younger students throughout the district and they've been held basically at the high school. We have aviation camp is going on now. And I'm announcing tonight that hashtag EHT Pride Day, which last year we were not able to hold, will occur this year on the sunny day of October 2nd, 2021. Also, part of our partnerships um, with, with the community is I shared a couple weeks ago that I, I met with the mayor and the representatives from the recreation department. And I proposed um, the, the uh, building of some fields here, right? So if you're familiar with the high school, to the right of the high school, which we're gonna use the high school as the center or the core of our community, um, I, there's a proposal here for five fields to be built. Also a track that'll go around those fields and hopefully some lights someday. Um, so our unified sports will be able to use that. We can give our fields, our varsity fields, um, some rest because as I shared with you, they do have a disease on them that have to be addressed. But the most important part and exciting part is after hours of the high school use, that these areas right here, these fields and the track area would be used um, by the 
Egg Harbor Township community. All right. So by partnering with um, the mayor and the township committee, um, we, we will put a vested um, focus on these fields and partnership um, their use. All right. So I think it'll be a great opportunity. Uh, the community can use them until 11, 12 o'clock at, at night, whatever the, the ordinance is. But there's an opportunity there to share resources and while also maintaining um, the excellence on our varsity fields that are producing championship teams. As I do every month, I share with you a visual of what's going on in the district, and thank you, Tyler, for creating this. and enjoying the sun, and that's a very, very good thing. But do you know that things are happening here in Egg Harbor Township? And Board of Education, I'd like to thank you very much because you listened to our ideas and our innovation and our proposals over the last six months, and here it is in, in action. And the best part is it's servicing kids. Kids are smiling, they're having fun, and they're, they're provided those enrichment opportunities or those catch-up opportunities, and there are opportunities to be better prepared for September. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Santilli will give the harassment intimidation bullying report as mandated by the state of New Okay, good evening. Tyler, I think next year we're gonna add some fun music to this presentation to follow Dr. Gruccio. However, uh, as mandated by the state of New Jersey, this is our 2021 annual report for SSDS and also uh, HIV. Uh, first, to break down SSDS, uh, we start on that, that macro level. These are, these are the incidents that would be reported uh, within the system. They're broken down by violence, vandalism, substance abuse, weapons offenses, and also confirmed uh, forms of harassment, intimidation, and bullying. You can see the subcategories that also break down these incidents as well. In terms of our district during the 2021 school year, on the left-hand column, you can see our school names, followed by the district-wide total, as well as comparative data for 1920 and also 1819. I think it's important to note uh, that I have put an asterisk 
Um, much like Major League Baseball, we have had some unique circumstances over the past year called COVID, um, which also impact our data. Um, so that has been noted uh, next to the comparative data for 1920 as well as this year for 2021. Uh, you can see those trends uh, and each column breaks down those major incidents for violence, vandalism, substances, weapons offenses, and also uh, confirmed HIBs, uh, as well as the total incidents within a district. This is what is under new business this evening for our board members. Um, this is the same information just reported through SSDS um, to the state, uh, which will be then certified um, actually tomorrow. Moving into and focusing more on our harassment, intimidation, and bullying report, um, it, as regards to one of those particular incident categories through SSDS, um, this is our full year report. Just as a refresher, has a definition of what HIV means at the top. In addition to that, there are three particular areas here that we focus on. Uh, one is the uh, perceived characteristic and being able to identify that. Uh, in addition, taking place on school property and also determining if it has uh, actually created a substantial disruption within the school environment. Those three must be met in addition to at least one or more of the below bullets uh, during the investigation. Investigations are led by anti-bullying specialists in conjunction with our administrative teams um, to make these final determinations. You can see this was the mid-year report, um, if you recall. Uh, probably, I guess, I can't remember if it was January or February, but I stood before you to present our mid-year data. Um, this was a snapshot of that as a just reminder uh, for the time period of September 1st through December 31st. And then also this is our end of year data, so this would conclude for the 2021 school year. Uh, you can see again, listed by school on the left-hand column, in addition to district totals, and then also comparative data for the last three years again. Just wanted to point out the asterisk in regards to the fact that we have been in a partial year pandemic in 1920, or even 2021 being the full year pandemic, which of course has impacted our, our numbers. Um, you see the totals, non-HIB, and also HIB, uh, or confirmed HIB for each of the schools and district totals as well. There has been follow-up, and, and oftentimes it's, it's not just about what we do during the investigation, but also what we do after an investigation. You can see that HIB case follow-up uh, in conjunction with our anti-bullying specialists uh, throughout the district, uh, in conjunction with building administrators and guidance counselors, as well as child study team members. Um, ultimately, what ends up happening is we, we focus on what we do as follow-up for both victims, aggressors, and also what we do as school-wide. Um, that is also reported to the state um, through uh, that portal, and that is through programs and trainings that we actually do in each of the schools and within the district. These are some of the lists uh, in regards to activities and trainings. You can see uh, the monthly meetings that would occur in regards to school safety teams. Uh, we do HIP training throughout the entire district, um, presentations to both students and staff, uh, mentoring programs, character education, uh, and the list goes on. Uh, we're constantly trying to evolve um, and make sure that we are not just reaching our students but also the community um, and also part of that is things like our initiative see something hear something say something which is really a federal initiative that we've taken pride in here in the HT as well as every hand together in pursuing public health videos reaching the community reaching parents trying to provide resources um, with those community partnerships in addition to that, there's a commissioner's program and we have to self-assess. So every year our anti-bullying specialists, along with administration and myself as the anti-bullying coordinator, we take a look at how we did in regards to the activities and programs and trainings we've put in uh, place um, and we have to rate ourselves. And that is part of that commissioner's program. And that self-assessment is then also reported um, to the state site. This is just an idea of that self-assessment and how it's broken down. There are eight core elements and they are broken down by those indicators as you see right there. And then you can get a score, a total score of 78 points. So as you can imagine, the higher you get to 78, um, the better you're doing. Um, so to just give you an idea of our trend here for uh, the, the you know, past number of years, um, you can see how we continue to uh, increase our total score. Uh, last week, if you recall, as part of the mandate as well, 
they release the grade uh, for the 1920 school year, so it's always basically a year behind. So we reported that out. We did get a rating of 75 out of 78, which was reported last week to the board. And we anticipate for 2021, we estimate that we will again receive 75 out of 78 points based off of our own self-assessment, which will be uploaded um, to the state site. Thank you very much. That concludes our presentation. Thank you, Mr. Santelli. Okay. Uh, at this time, we are going to uh, take public comments on agenda items only. We'll have two public comment periods this evening. First one is for agenda items only. Um, and so we'll start here in the room and then we'll go to whoever may be on the phone. And uh, so if anyone here in the room has questions or comments on agenda items only, uh, please come forward to the microphone. Okay. All right, don't all come up at once. <laughs> all right, seeing none, does that count as for one of my jokes or not, not really? Uh, that wasn't really very good, okay. So uh, let's go ahead then to our call-ins and see if there are any uh, questions or comments on the phone on agenda items only. Uh, while that's running, I'll just go through, um, as I always do, uh, some of the ground rules. We ask for uh, everyone to please give their name and address uh, for the record. Um, comments or questions are limited to three minutes. We cannot discuss uh, litigation or personnel matters and it may be possible that uh, a, comp uh, a complex question we may need to get back to you uh, tomorrow or in the following days with a full answer. Okay, we're out to the phones. doing Miss Anaya a few more seconds we'll be going to make it a minute okay um, I will go ahead and um, I do have an email to public comment so full board I have to apologize we had a public comment at the last meeting it was emailed it had been over a month and a step was missed that's all I can say so I apologize to the um, to the community member we did get them question their questions answered ahead of time but because it's public comment we're going to report out at this meeting for public comment to hear what the responses so I have one that's related to agenda, happens to be at this agenda, but it is related, so we'll read that one for now and save the rest for later, okay? All right. All right. So we have from Regina Bongiorno. It's 405 Starfish Lane. And the agenda question is related to, um, in regards to transportation shortages, have we been able to hire drivers and aides for this upcoming school year? I'm pleased to report on this agenda under appointments. We have six bus drivers, two bus driver substitutes, and three bus aid substitutes we're looking to appoint on this agenda. Uh, we are still actively recruiting. You will be seeing lawn signs, as we have previously discussed, um, to try to encourage um, the community members to apply. Parents at home, it's a great mom-dad job, so go ahead and put your names in, and we'll train you and get you all squared away with your CDL. So that uh, concludes the public comment for the agenda item section. Okay, and nothing, no one else on the line? No. Okay. Can we allow three hours for the West Coast feed? <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> Ding. <laughs> okay, we're going to move on ahead to uh, finance and operations. Um, first, um, we are going to hold finance item 7.5. So with the exception of 7.5, may I have a motion on 7.1 through 7.15? So made. Second. Is there any discussion on finance and operations? Seeing none, roll call please. There we go, thank you. Uh, Ms. Alabarda? Yes. Thank you. Mrs. Bird? It's well, basically what it comes down to is two, not three. So if you're not voting, if you can just have your microphones off, we'll see how this works. We'll give IT some feedback. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Mr. Delabarca. Yes. Mr. Ireland. Yes. Mr. Price. Yes. Mrs. Salagi. Sullivan. Excuse me, Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. First. Mrs. Salagi. Yes. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd. Yes. And Mr. Castellano. Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We're going to move to curriculum, and I'm going to ask for a motion on 8.1 through 8.6, please. I'll make that motion. Second. Hold on, it's not working. I'll make that motion, Mr. Price. Second. Okay. Mike has a mic. Is there any discussion on curriculum? Seeing none, may we have roll call, please? Ms. Alabarda? Yes. Mrs. Bird? Yes. Mr. Delabarga? Yes. Mr. Ireland? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Salagi? Yes. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. And Mr. Castellano? Yes. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move uh, now into personnel. Uh, we are pulling personnel item 9.4 B30. So with the exception of that on personnel, if I can have a motion on 9.1 through 9.7, please. So made. Second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, roll call please. Ms. Alabarda. Yes. Mrs. Bird? Yes. Mr. Dallabarca? Yes. Mr. Ireland? Yes. Mr. Price? It is the item you're thinking of. I'm sorry, I thought you were looking up the item. Go ahead. Well, I'm going to um, vote no to item 9.1B1 okay. and no to 9.7A1. Yes to everything else. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Salagi? Yes. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. And Mr. Castellano? Yes. Okay. Oh, we have, we have to introduce some folks, don't we? Yes, we do. I wouldn't have forgotten that. Don't worry, I would have caught myself. No, and I'm excited to announce and introduce to you for the very first time in public our new Egg Harbor Township School District employees. And please stand. And I'll begin with Jennifer Craig, physical therapist, Davenport School. Welcome. <laughs> Mr. Nicholas Baxter, special education teacher, Fernwood Middle School. Holly Lesser, teacher at Swift Slayball Complex. Welcome back. Elizabeth Ritchie, teacher at the Swift Slayball Complex. Welcome back. Linda Champion, teacher at Miller. Jenna Hill, teacher at Miller. Chelsea Taylor, preschool expansion teacher at the Swift Slayball Complex. Aaron Meehan, preschool expansion teacher at the Swift Slayball School. 
Samantha Florio, preschool expansion teacher at Swift Slayball Complex. Amy Carr, preschool expansion teacher at the Swift Slayball Complex. Dr. Leanna Mullen, now the district data analysis specialist. Wyatt Singer, computer support specialist for the district. Heather Wurzberger, media clerk at Miller. Jennifer Reed, media clerk at Fernwood Avenue Middle School. Lauren Schlamm, media clerk at Alder Avenue Middle School. <laughs> Alyssa Armstrong, Talon staff. <laughs> and last but not least, our new director of athletics of the Egg Harbor Township High School, Mr. Kevin Rutledge. Awesome. Welcome to all of you. Congratulations. You're welcome to stay for the rest of our business meeting, but if you have other things to do, you want to see that Olympic race or whatever it may be, you won't hurt our feelings. <laughs> we understand. Thank you. Good luck. As they are exiting, uh, Dr. Gruccio, if you could please um, uh, make sure we know when uh, the date will be to welcome new staff as well as the um, initial staff meeting of the school year. I guess those are coming, not right away, but you know, they're coming. So you can just shoot them out to us just so we get ready. We don't need them right this second. Okay, very good. Nice to welcome those folks. Um, next we are going to move to policy. Um, we are going to hold uh, at the request of the chair policy 10.19 for this evening uh, but other than that uh, I would like to ask for a motion on 10.1 through 10.19 please motion second is there any discussion on policy seeing none roll call please oh Go ahead and Did you something. say we're holding 10.19? Yes. So we're not voting on 10.19? Correct. Correct. Okay. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Ms. Alabarda? Yes. Mrs. Bird? Yes. Mr. Della Barca? Yes. Mr. Ireland? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Salagi? Yes. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. And Mr. Castellano? Yes. Okay, a couple of items of new business, uh, and that would be 11.1 through 11.3. May I have a motion? So made. Second. Any discussion on any of those three items? Seeing none, roll call please. Ms. Alabarda? Yes. Mrs. Bird? Yes. Mr. Dallabarca? Yes. Mr. Ireland? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Salagi? No to 11.1, .1. yes to the rest. Thank you. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. And Mr. Castellano? Yes. Okay, uh, moving now into old business. I'm going to break these up into two parts. So let's first take, if we can, I'm first going to take a motion on 12.1. May I have a motion on 12.1? Second. Is there any discussion on 12.1? Seeing none, roll call, please. Ms. Alabarda? Yes. Mrs. Bird? Yes. Mr. Della Barca? Yes. Mr. Ireland? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Salagi? No to 12.1, yes to the rest. Okay, it's just 12.1, so that'll be a no, though, thank you. No problem. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. And Mr. Castellano? Yes. Okay. Okay, 
So we have now um, voted to approve 12.1. So now 12.2, let's see if we can't work this out together this evening. Uh, we have, um, uh, and I'm hoping we can get up on the screen, we received some suggested additional language, supplemental language to go into these norms. I really think it's in our best interest to come to some consensus on this tonight. We've got a lot of work ahead of us. We have um, board goals to adopt. We have strategic planning to get to. So I, I would really like for us to, um, you know, let, let, let's work together and collaborate and let's get some norms and allow us to move forward with many other things. Are we able to open the final document? I think that's what we we're looking to do at this point, and then and then work through that. The document submitted by school boards. Um, I think it's I. Well, I. For the first one, although there's a couple of attachments. I think here. the third. I think if you go back, right. So in in twelve point two. Mm -hmm. I believe the suggested update. I could be wrong here. Okay. No, there we go. I believe that captures everyone's suggested edits. So we have with a before, during, and after with some suggested changes and additions, and then we have some items down uh, below that I guess uh, could fall into any of the three categories or just be overarching norms. Um, there's others too that I haven't seen because I don't, I, I don't get to my agenda on a Tuesday because I'm working. I look at it all beforehand. So Disregard the format, I'm just putting in something I can edit. So before. Is everyone okay with the before? As edited. Go ahead, Ms. Sullivan. Again, I'm going to be the sour grapes, but this is another set of um, roles that we're going to put in place that who's going to, are we going to monitor each other? Are we just going to briefly read over them? I think, uh, again, with our ethics that we sign and the oath that we take when we're sworn in is enough. Um, as far as I'm concerned, before a meeting, we should prepare. During the meeting, we should collaborate. And at the end of the meeting, we should um, respect the decisions that were made. So I'm not going to add anything more to that. OK. Anyone else on before? Go ahead, Mrs. Gilberfoy. Uh, for before the meeting, the one um, where it says number three says continually develop trust. And I, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. I just don't know. How it fits in bef before the meeting, you want to continually develop trust. What is? 
Is your recommendation to strike out? I think if the board members just say, if you strike. take this, like Marita gave, she would like to keep number one okay. of each, number one, number one, and number three, number two. Okay, I was just trying so to. So if you want to just do number three, what you're just. Or maybe, to, I don't, not that I don't dislike it, but I don't know how you can. Edit? Or so perhaps the meeting. group that put it together at the offsite might want, might want to answer the question, who was in the before group? And, I, and I'm going to say that I was not because I was, I wasn't able to attend uh, gotcha. virtually, and then I was out at the other meeting. All right, so, no, okay. Any objections to crossing that out, I guess is the question. Does anyone, all right. So we can, we'll cross out number three. Other than that, can, can I see a show of hands? Are we okay to leave the, the before section? And we'll move to Dory. Are we all okay with the before section? Yes. Yes, just as it shows up there. All right? We're okay? All right, let's move to Dorian. Who has thoughts on Dorian? That's Richard. Anybody? Are we okay with Dorian as amended? I just want to say that the part about developing trust or what have you, that could be, that could be put, I think that will belong during the meeting. That's just my personal opinion. That's something you can work on while you're working together and keeping things confidential. That's just. Go ahead. Barker. Well, if you look at some of the items at the bottom that were suggested as possible, you might want to pick uh, number one, uh, let me see, number eight, maybe. If you all look through those and read through them, there might be something that could be added during the, the meeting. The items at the bottom are all from the suggested items that uh, Marianne Friedman gave us at one of the organization times. So there's something we may have looked at before, but, you know, it's for discussion. So at this time, recommendation to add number one and number eight from the bottom and move the developing trust to the section. Is that where we are right now? Yeah, that would be right. If we could. So let, let's do the, move the developing trust in, right? Approve the during, approve the after, then go to the bottom items and see where we might want to plug those in. Does that sound like a plan? Yeah, that's what I just suggested. That there's a Perfect. That it might be. All right, so we got that. So is everyone okay with the during? Kind of a silly So during thing is going to have these four items plus moving the developing trust. So developing trust. Okay. okay. Now we have after, I can't read after, but reading in context. No, it's not the science of reading, but I'm using the context there to surmise that that says after. <laughs> that was for Mrs. Burke. <laughs> Do I get credit for that for a joke? Okay, good. All right. Oh, okay. So I'm looking for feedback now on after a meeting, um, as as amended. Thoughts? Are we okay with after after a meeting uh, as Mr. amended? Mr. President, I just have a question. Sure. Look at after a meeting. In other words, it says number two, uphold decisions made by the board, but number five says support decisions of the board. Is that the same thing? I didn't yes. want to edit. I wanted to give it to you yes. all. Yes. So what we're going to do is if we're okay with after, we'll go down to the bottom and we'll take a look at those. And I guess there's some other things too. I haven't seen those and we'll see what we might want to plug and play. I Thank believe, you. I believe he was trying to say cross out number two because number five, they're repetitive. They're the same thing. Number five is just going a little bit more detail. Yeah, so basically what I'm saying is really you don't really need number two because it's covered under number five. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Ireland. Correct. Oh, I get you. Okay, so you're not down the bottom, but w from within. That's fine. Is everyone okay with that? Does that make sense? All right, so now we finish the after the after the meeting. Um, 
And so I'll now I'll take suggestions from anyone of these. Are there any of these that we want to plug in up into as norms? Go ahead, Mrs. Alabarda. I like number six to support the superintendent and give her the resources necessary to help her be as effective as possible. Now I'm fine with that, but my only question with these nine is are these meeting norms or are these more board goals or are they more they're basically management objectives is how they're labeled by school boards association so right. they really could almost put them as they can fit in a lot of places yeah. and I, yeah. I included these i'm the person who submitted these because i thought we should have the discussion i thought they were appropriate some may work, but it's up to the board. I'm not pushing all nine of them. You know, I just think it would be a good discussion to look at these and see if they may fit for all of us, uh, since we were concerned about some of the detail that we may have been lacking previously. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take recommendations. Uh, who would like to plug any of the the nine up and above? And I see Mrs. Gilbert Floyd. Um, so number number eight, where it says refrain, refrain from lecturing and grandstanding or being or beating a dead horse into the ground. <laughs> I think that um, uh, I think that goes back to um, almost having like um, we can either do that or we can have like a time frame. Like hey, you get you get a couple minutes. Each person gets a couple minutes. Um, or if someone you know keeps time uh, during the meeting, I know that could be a lot. Um, but just how we, you know, when the public speaks, they get their three minutes, and they can come back around, so that so that no one person, you know, uh, manipulates the time intentionally or unintentionally, because we're all not all of us, but a lot of us are talkers. Not me, but I'm just saying. Uh, never. You. Um, you know, other people. <laughs> when when I kidding. added this one, I really didn't like the terminology of dead horse in there, but that's the way it was worded. And I yeah, that's we, okay, we, but we, we all did, know what it we means. deal with it. <laughs> no, absolutely. So I don't know if that's, I mean, I think that something of that nature, like just to be mindful of others in your time frame when you're speaking in the meeting or an executive meeting. Anyone else? Any, a, any other thoughts? I mean, my thought is these are nine good things but are not necessarily board norms. I think we've got a good set of norms. I think these may feed into our board goals when we do goal setting. But I'll take Mrs. Sullivan. I agree with that. These are more objectives that we want to accomplish, so it should go under goals when we decide what our goals are. But I think um, restricting any of our speech even during meetings is, again, another restriction that I'm not in favor of. Any any other thoughts, or, uh, Mr. Mr. President? I would agree that uh, this better belongs in uh, in goals rather than norms. Um, it's all good ideas, but it's just in the wrong spot, in my opinion. Thank you. I'm going to disagree because our objectives not necessarily considered any management objectives. So I, they could be either place, folks. So if you would like, you think that listen and speak, speak with respect to, to others at all times. That's, that's part of them running a meeting. That's not just a goal. So they might fit. So I would just say, I'm not pushing for all nine of them. I just think that they should be discussed. And possibly, they could be part of our uh, norms. Um, Go ahead, Ms. Gilbert Ford. Let me just ask, have, is listen and speak with respect to others at all times? I think we've kind of covered that. But if we haven't. Mm -hmm. So let's just. Under number, three. Under number three, once recognized by the board president, ensure that each board member is allowed to speak without interruption. Sort of listening and speaking. So do you want to add in that number one? We'll just add it in as a second sentence. How's that? Yep, we'll take that. We'll plug and play and we'll put that right in right after that.
Because that's a good one. I like that. Oh, sorry, I didn't get to Mrs. Gilbert Floyd. Go ahead. No, that's okay. That's my second time. So, and I think it goes back to like when I talked about, um, like I'm not saying that we should censor what we say or having our opinions, but just that goes along with the being respectful like of others' time. Um, that's all. I'm not censoring what you're saying, but maybe your delivery and then the amount of time that you, in which you do it. That's what I. That's what I'm kind of referring to when when I think of, um, think of that. And and one other thing for, um, after the meetings, I know we. You, some one of the board norms. I think um, there's times when, you know, I've experienced it where we. This I mean, we're not maybe not being an executive session, but we're in the, the, uh, chambers or whatever you want to call it, and sometimes we have people that come in. And start conversations about different things that you know probably really shouldn't be, shouldn't be discussed um, after a board meeting or what have you. So, not that the public is, of course, is welcome here in the boardroom, but I think that we, you know, those areas should be kind of kept off and maybe private because I have had that experience of where you know people come in and it just kind of it kind of try to almost turn into a second board meeting and bring up issues and things where it's like. Uh, I'm going to be quiet because I don't know wh why you're bringing this topic up or discussing it with one board member or the other because we operate as a board, not as individuals when we're, you know, at, at a meeting. So how about I don't know how to word that. would I be right summing it up, avoid sidebar conversations? No, sidebar, I think sidebar I, amongst, amongst ourselves is, dip, that's kind of like us, like if I lean over and talk to Chris, I need to stop because I shouldn't be talking, but I'm talking about when members who are not on the Board of Education kind of find themselves into the area where other board members may be and striking up conversations about things that may have happened in the meeting. I have had that experience where, and it's kind of uncomfortable, it's kind of like, uh, like afterward, yeah, after I know, I, I know, I've and seen it happen a million times. I don't know how you, quant how do, how do we quantify in word? I mean, that's really not our norm. Um, how much do we control that? I mean. It needs to be a norm. Is the norm for the board to not entertain staff in that area or um, not staff, community members in that area? Because we can't control if somebody wanders. We have security. Thank you very much for being here. But if, if it's a board to... norm, then it's behavior after a board to not have a guest in our Executive area, and I was like, yes. something like that. Keep no, no, no guest. Executive, executive area. The executive after meetings or area whatever. is for will be for board and staff only. Mm -hmm. Do we want to consider that as a norm? To maybe I I would like to consider it as a norm. For stop all of us that to, issue. It, it happens. It happens. I know and sometimes exactly things what things happen or things are said. It's kind of like people wander <laughs> in, and next thing you know, we're off. You know, talking about things that are really not productive. Put a sign. Sign on the door. Staff and board members only. Or board, or board members only. Yeah. That's that. No, we need no. See, the thing of it is, what I'm saying is, I may feel that way and say I don't think we should do that. But then everyone, the other eight people may say, "Oh, to make go have a seat. That's not a big deal. No, what's the big deal?" But I'm saying that it it can it has been an issue and it can become a problem. Um, that's how I, I've had that experience. So that's why I'm bringing it up. It's something that we will kind of all have to agree on. And if we don't, we don't. But I'm just saying I think it should be a part of that. We all consistent like. It's just like we know that no one can be, no one else could be in our uh, meeting executive session that's not a, a board member, um, and we just need to be mindful of that because th sometimes some some people come and they bring things that they have that just aren't appropriate. <laughs> well, and the, the other thing I guess that may may tie in with it is if those conversations are taking place, it's like almost having a secret not a secret but an extra extra board meeting well, i don't want to look at it members. if i'm having I, an extra no. board meeting with someone no that's we're, we're trying, trying to do exactly the opposite about something so i just don't know what, what's it what's really the best way to capture it but 
So as the administrator who usually is here closing out and kicking people out, it, it signs are a good idea. And I think if we, if I would have, if I had the board support and understanding to say, if I see a board member or committee member and they're to say, excuse me, can you please bring your conversation out? That's okay too. We don't mind doing it without making it a norm, but it has to be that you all agree that community shouldn't be there. So I guess that's the norm we're asking about is, do you guys agree with that? So yeah, C can we try to do that without? Without putting in norms? So we'll right. put signs right. up and right. then empower the board secretary <laughs> to ask people to move out. Okay. Yeah, because it's, I mean, right. you know, there's, there's, there's process to our meetings. Everyone has ample opportunity for public comment um, we meet as a board, you know, when our meetings are over, there shouldn't be extra things. All right. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, I just want to add that there's a lot of great norms on here, um, and the collaboration has improved it, I feel. Um, there is some redundancy, so maybe we mm -hmm. can clean that up a bit. But uh, one area that I'm torn about is the designation before, during, after. Um, I like the idea of organizing it that way. However, a lot of the things that are in the before section are equally as applicable for the during section and the after section. So, um, so is there a way for us just to format it in a, just a, in a list um, because, you know, uh, respecting the separate roles, that's important, referring all persons, that's important, collaborating in a positive manner. We want to collaborate positively no matter where we are in the meeting. Uh, what, so that's an area that I'm just asking maybe we could nix those delineations, how everyone else feels about that. Any other thoughts? I think it's a great idea. Just It just cleans it up, and a lot of them are redundant before, during, and after. So we can just take that out. Mr. President, so, so basically, Ms. Bird, you're talking about maybe just consolidating them all instead of actually saying, well, this fell under that one and that fell under this one. Just consolidate them all under one board norms, right? Okay, that makes sense to me also. Mr. Delvar. One of the, one of the suggestions made by the uh, school boards is to call them um, procedural and operational. Uh, they, they gave that sample to us way back when. So that's under management team. It's actually you could have procedural and operational instead of that. And the other suggestion that they did give was before, during, and after. And they, uh, then they called the fourth item board processes we agreed to. So you can look at either one of those. But I like the idea of maybe procedural one. I don't know. That might be a way to do it. I guess, though, I just go back to it was school boards, our field service rep, who came in with us yeah. and gave us the before, during, and after format, yeah. and everyone was all right with it when we f formed them. So I guess that just gives me a little bit of the agita because we keep revisiting, revisiting, revisiting. But she also gave us the packet that all the other right, ideas were in. Right, so. but that, that, I mean, that's what she had suggested. So, I mean, I'm fine with that. What we can do is, is get rid of that delineation and just number them one to whatever they are, whatever's the pleasure of the board. Go ahead, Mrs. Bird. I think I keep coming back to the board norms, um, the procedural way we went about it, and I'm having problems with it now and not then because I didn't understand the process then as much. We were separated to, into before, in, in, during, after, but we weren't told that that is how we were going to frame it. it. It seemed to me, from my perspective at the retreat, that we were doing that to organize our ideas, but not to organize our norms for the uh, permanently. And I think another issue I have had why, and, and why I've criticized the norms at this point is because we didn't get to see what she presented to us, that we didn't talk about it that night, we didn't collaborate about ideas that night. We were all separate. We brought back together. She collected them, and then we got this list. So it's not that we were in agreement during the night, and it's not that we were all on board. It's that procedurally, I know I was not sure of the process. I did not understand that is what we were doing, and we were coming, and we were in agreement because that was the way it was organized. So I apologize if it comes across that 
my issues arose later, but I guess in some ways my issues did arise later because when I saw what she provided us, it, it to me was not as thorough as I would have liked. So, um, so this is not a shot against that night in any way, but I, I just think our expectations weren't as clear as they needed to be, at least from my perspective. Okay, understood. So everyone, we, we asked to, that we would collaborate at our last work meeting. We, we started the process, but we didn't finish. Uh, we've submitted things. So do we have um, uh, a consensus that will simply make these a listing? We'll get rid of the before, during, and after? Yes. Okay. I did that, we're down to 11, and Let's, if we're done with that bottom half here, then okay. we can move on to the other. Are there any others from the bottom that we want to move up? Um, because remember, we can save these for our board, for board goal time. How about number seven, speaking of goals? Hey, I'm not, I don't see that as a meeting norm. I, that's a great thing we ought to do. But what, what do board members think? I have a suggestion. Sorry. Okay. I have a suggestion for that one. Instead of to establish goals, uh, to focus on our district goals during each meeting. Let's, let's move that up. Move that up. That's number 12. Are there any others that we'd like to, that we'd like to move up? It's sort of like we're moving, you know, from the minor league up to the big leagues. <laughs> any others that we'd like to move up? And then we'll take a look at anything else that was submitted. And we're almost there. We are almost there. They said it couldn't be done, but we've proven them wrong. So this this was some more something that, uh, submitted more recently. As a recommendation to just this is going to be the norms as an overriding disregarding everything else it should just be this was the recommendation received. Okay. Does, does so the recommendation received was to substitute this for what we currently have. Does anyone? Is there any? Um, Suggestion that we do that. Yes, yes. I think that's a, a good suggestion, and um, I think we should move on it. So you'd like to substitute these three for the list that we have. This is kind of like, let's make a deal. Remember Monty Hall? So you can have these three, or we can have the, the 12 behind door number one. The, the 12 that we've just worked through. Or we can swap those out for these oh, three. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought you, yeah. were, gonna, I thought you, I thought you were gonna add these no. before, during, no, and after. I'm just going on with the suggestion that we received. Right, so, so we're eliminating before, during, and after, and they're gonna be these are gonna be absorbed into what we discussed. We already, so we already eliminated the before, during, and after distinctions. We just have this list of 12. Right, so I, the, I understand. So yes. the suggestion was get rid of everything else, just use these guys down here. Does anyone want to do that? Yes, I do, because they were mine. That's my suggestions. Okay, fair enough. Does anyone else want to do that? Okay. Was there any other material submitted this would be it okay are, are we at the place that we can at least get a consensus on the 12 and get this job done tonight 1 through 12 no before during and after going once everybody good Going twice. Okay. 
<coughs> sold. Will I upload this as a PDF and this is what we'll take action on then? I can do that? Yes. Okay. I, I think we can just vote on it. Is everyone comfortable voting on uh, our new norms will be 1 through 12 as they appear on the screen. So that will be the motion. And we'll allow Chandra to get back to her station and we'll take a motion on the norms as agreed to in public session. You like the way I just formed that? You're getting cooler and cooler, Mr. President. Motion right there, and Ms. Ms. Hauk Alko, like the way, yeah, okay, good. <laughs> you can see I don't get out much. <laughs> don't shut that down, Mal. You hear me? <laughs> Go for it, Mr. President. Okay, so can I have a motion? to adopt the norms uh, as discussed this evening in open session. Motion. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, roll call please. Ms. Alabarda? Yes. Mrs. Bird? Yes. Mr. Delabarca? Yes. Mr. Ireland? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? No. Mrs. Salagi? No. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. Mrs. Uh, Mr. Price, excuse me, Mr. Casolano. I'm sorry. Have a good day. Mr. Oh. Casolano, how are you feeling? <laughs> oh, did you get Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. I just yes. stumbled on your name, I apologize. Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you all, everyone. Uh, that was a long road, but we got there. <sighs> okay, uh, we're now into communications. We have an updated board calendar. Um, Senator Booker f answered our inquiry about vaccines. Um, better late than never, but we appreciate the response. And um, is there anything new for us, Mr. Del Barca, that you'd like to report from New Jersey school boards? Only that, if you recall at the last meeting, uh, Ms. Ms. Anaya brought up about the meeting topics for the first two meetings in the fall for the county school boards. So I was able to get them changed. So we are now having our first meeting will be October 13th. We'll be creative ways to use ESSER funds. And the next meeting on December 6th will be regionalization. So thank you again, Mrs. Anaya, for the suggestion. The state had no problem with it. We made, made it an easy switch. And that's all I have to report tonight. Thank you. Very good. OK. We are now going to go back uh, for public comment again on any topic. And I've already uh, given our guidelines. So we'll, we'll start here in the room if anyone has any comments. And then we'll move to the telephone. Anyone? Anything at all? Anyone? Okay. We'll go ahead and move to the phones. I do have two emails when the time comes, so don't let me forget. <laughs> Another 30 seconds or so, we'll wait. Okay, 
it's been a full minute with no phone calls. I will start with the emails, and if the phone rings, we'll still be in public comment. Perfect. Okay. So we have Kim Minshall. I'm not going to do the timer because I timed myself, and it's under three minutes, and it's too much work, to be honest. <laughs> Kim Minshall, 115 Sandbar Road, Egg Harbor Township. When will Davenport start building an all abilities playground? I remember there was talk of building an adapted playground that would be accessible to all students. Is that still in the works? Second statement, did Slayball fix the leak in their building? Third, will the HD high school pool offer swim lessons to children with disabilities? My children with disability, many children with disabilities are attracted to water and often wander. It is paramount that children with disabilities learn water safety. When will swim lessons be available to children with disabilities at the EHT pool? Currently parents can pay for lessons for children who do not have disabilities, but this is not offered to families who have children with disabilities. Why not? And the last question, taxpayers pay for all beautiful sports facilities. When will they be open to the public for use? Can EHT have hang signs with schedules and rules? So that's the first public comment email. Do you want me to read them all then answer them all? Or would you like to hear it? Um, I don't, ha if, if you've had time to put those answers together, I think that's probably something, Dr. Crucho, that you're gonna wanna put a response together, right to and get back to with email. Cause that's, okay. that's a, that's a multi-part, that's a multi-part question. Your decision, we have. Unless you've got. We have answers, but. Do you have answers yeah. prepared already? Then we're yeah. then we're I'm fine with that. If you guys are ready. Okay. So for number one, um, Davenport will um, begin the playground. We've received proposals yesterday and are hoping to get this installed by the end of the fall. Regarding the leaks at Slay Ball, yes, they were fixed. Regarding the. Um, pool and swim lessons with children with disabilities. Right now the school does not have a swim program outside of the high school physical education programs. However, the unified sports program um, may be something that could offer this. And um, if you've lived in a Harbor Township long, long enough, you know that the rec department used to offer uh, the swim lessons, lessons in the swim program. So um, it's up for collaborative discussion um, as we move forward. Taxpayers for beautiful sports facilities. I believe I explained tonight that I present, there is a proposal on the table for fields um, that we're working together with the township. I was in contact with the township just today and they said that's going to be, um, it's sounding good so far. It'll be presented tomorrow night um, at their meeting. Very good. Thank you. I'll go ahead with the next public comment email. We have from Regina Bongiorno, 405 Starfish Lane. I apologize if this was addressed earlier in the meeting, but if not, please advise on the following. What was the plan, what is the plan for the return of school and protocol for K-12 will need to follow in regards to masks and social distancing? Is EHT considering mas where, masking? I can't talk today, I'm so sorry. <laughs> is EHT considering making masks optional for students and staff? Will we return to the pre-pandemic school day hours versus a minimum four hours of in-person learning? How will lunches this year be handled? Will high school and middle school have lunch periods again? If the plans have not been made at this time, when can the public anticipate transparency on these questions? And then there's another comment by the same person separate. So it's another three minutes, if you will. Okay, well, before I turn it over to Dr. Cruccio, I. Uh, I do have to say, you will always get transparency from us. Um, be, much of what's being asked, as we spoke of earlier during this uh, superintendent's report, and, and as we let in, uh, things uh, are evolving daily. But I'll, I'll turn that over to Dr. Cruccio. Yes, Mr. Castellano, I believe you covered um covered it there um, and I, I know I covered it in the beginning of our presentation 
um, of our meeting tonight, the plan to to return. Um, you know, I stated I my plan is to return to no normalcy, but uh, considering all that's going on, um, and the and we, that we do not have any information from the state at this time, um, we're going to go ahead with those pandemic response team meetings, um, the second and third weeks of, of August, and see what we come up with, and we'll move from there. So stakeholder input, um, hopefully some guidance, and you know, we'll see where we are. Very good. Thank you. And this is the last public comment email from Regina Bongiorno, 405 Starfish Lane. Um, Follow-up questions to concerns brought to the board's attention in prior meetings. Have the HVAC systems been working and on and updated throughout the summer break? Have they fixed the um, known leaks, issues in pipes and sweating at Slay Ball? And will fall and spring middle sports be available for 21-22 school year? Okay, so that's really just another set of questions, but um, all right. Okay, for the HVAC systems, yes, we have been uh, continuing to work on the process of preventive maintenance, and we've begun the process of re uh, replacing units, uh, and this will continue out throughout the school year. Have we fixed the leaks? Yes, in regards to transportation shortage. Uh, we have had several hires just on this agenda. However, we still are actively recruiting. As Chandra and myself said in our, um, uh, said earlier, we, we definitely need more bus drivers. So keep the push on. And regarding fall, uh, spring middle school sports, again, I'm hoping that we open uh, in a normal setting and that um, all our programs will be in place for our students K through 12. Did I miss one? Nope. Uh, regarding masks, middle school talked about middle school, middle school sports. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Okay. I think that brings to a close our public comment. Uh, we're going to go to board member comment, um, and I am going to uh, take the liberty of making the first comment, and I'll be. Uh, I just want to say. Um, that uh, over the past several months I've been doing quite a bit of thinking and uh, you know I've spent 20 years on the Board of Education uh, I've given it 100 percent of my effort over all those many years and uh, I feel now is the right time for me to step away and uh, I've enjoyed it and uh, the saying goes, all good things must come to an end. And so I'll just take this opportunity uh, to say thank you to everyone and uh, just sort of formally announce that I will not be seeking re-election. Thank you. Any other board members? Mr. President, we're going to discuss you later on. You, you are, you're, you're in office till the uh, end of December, so I think we can have a discussion about all your contributions at a later date. Thank you, Mr. Delbarker. Mrs. Burke. Um, I have three questions. Um, my first question is if, God forbid, we are, find ourselves in a situation like we were in last year where we had to go virtual. Um, I am imploring that administration consider having our teachers be either virtual teachers or in-person teachers, not both at the same time. Um, I know that from professionally speaking where I work, I was strictly a virtual teacher all year while we other teachers in my building were strictly in-person teachers and it really benefited our students um, and I think that's what matters most so I just hope that if I pray we don't have to do that but I hope that administration will consider that because it really does benefit the kids the most even if they start out with one teacher and have to be swapped at some point um, because doing both that's hard that's really hard um, so I, I hope that you guys can consider that. My second, that was more of a comment. My second question, um, do we have dividers for every student in the district at this point? Uh, I know that we used face shields in the middle and high school um, because they are transient. 
However, um, I think that at this point, we should consider making sure we have dividers in the event that we continue to uh, have to move backwards instead of forwards. Um, so my question is, do we have that currently? My last question um, is in regards to one of the questions we received. Uh, the All Abilities Playground, that's a great question. I'm so glad that um, someone asked it. I'm also so glad to hear that there are plans and it's moving forward. Um, we have moved a lot of our special education population to Sleigh Ball. So my question is, do we have an All Abilities Playground right now at Sleigh Ball? And if not, do we have plans for one? And if we have plans for one, uh, could we possibly utilize our collaboration that we have with the township to help us build an all abilities playground that the community can use in school and after hours. Uh, those are my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, you read my mind because uh, you, you can ask my staff what I directed them to do, and I might as well announce to the board instead of sending you an email, I will be utilizing some vacation days beginning tomorrow morning. Um, and possibly to um, Monday. But however, what I left them with is we, we need to think out of the box, we need to pro be proactive, we need to think ahead and look into the possibility of all virtual teachers. Now, as we move up into the high school, it becomes a little difficult because teachers um, may teach different levels, all right? So they're an English teacher, but they may be CP, AP, advanced, um, Honor. So um, we really have to study what that looks like. Um, and that's why I really pressed if, folk, if kids are enrolling into the school districts, it's important that we know sooner than later because it's very difficult to plan uh, around that. If I take a, a second grade teacher and say, you know, out of my 24 second grade teachers, you are a virtual teacher, then I have to take that class count and disperse it to the other teachers, all right? So um, there's a lot involved, um, but I, I assure you we are looking at it and we are researching it so we can have answers for those pandemic response team uh, meetings. So that, that was um, one that I was excited to uh, say that we're on the same page with moving forward. Um, regarding the desk shields, again, that's something that we can look into. I know at, at last year um, there was um, feedback from the uh, middle school and high schools about the cleaning process because there were different kids behind that shield um, five, six times a day. So, so we'll look about into that and we'll talk about that. Um, and regarding the playground, when I have that response back from, from the township, I'd be glad to share uh, that request. And that was four, right? I got them all? Okay. And Everything. the sleigh ball is actually getting the playground. There's be installed before Davenport's hmm. sleigh ball portion. The sleigh ball portion is getting the playground. You got that? Is that what you said, Sean? Yes, yeah, so you answered the part about township, but she also asked about um, sleigh ball having an all um, all inclusive playground as well, and that is actually further along than Davenport's. Yeah. Okay. All abilities. It will preschool primary uh, sleigh ball primary is a specifically a preschool school at this point. Um, Swift is K-1 and we're looking at upgrading. That is going to be behind Davenport in the order of importance, uh, but it's all on our radar. <laughs> so, yeah. Any other board members? Mrs. Sullivan. One comment about the all-inclusive playgrounds. I know um, having a daughter as a para, we need to um, have a gate or something to tie off a certain area of the playground because they a lot of the students can't play with the other students, or if there's a gate open and you have runners, they're gone. So somehow we have, when we make this all abilities playground, we have to do the scheduling for the students, what classes are gonna be there, try not to overlap uh, too many classes together because having a lot of students in the same area at the same time also upsets some of the uh, special needs students. So there's a lot that's going to have to go into that all-inclusive playground, and I know you'll cover it all. Any other, any other board member comments? Seeing none, administration. I think we're good. Thank you, everyone, for your support. And uh, yeah, looking forward to more innovation and brainstorming over the next month so we have some uh, information to present to you prior to opening day. Thank you. 
Okay, before I ask for that motion, I just want to repeat um, something from last meeting and I want to try to repeat all through the summer. Really, it applies at all times during the year, but especially during this uh, summer uh, to, to our students and families. If there's anything that we can help you with here at the district, whether it's academic, counseling, or otherwise, please reach out to us and we'll do what we can. So with that, uh, I'm going to ask for a motion. Second. All in favor, we are adjourned. Good night, everyone. Thank you.